There's widespread concern at this hour that North Korea will conduct its sixth nuclear test this weekend. China warns the conflict could break out at any moment as the rhetoric from the North and the U.S. heats up. CNN's Alexandra Field is live in Seoul, South Korea, with all of the details. Alexandra. Hey there, Allison. Good morning. Washington does fully expect and anticipate, and they are preparing for the possibility of a sixth nuclear test or another ballistic missile launch from North Korea, although no one can say with any certainty when exactly that would happen. The question now is how the U.S. will respond to those kinds of provocations. It is the issue that VP Mike Pence will take up when he makes his visit to the region, stopping in Seoul over the weekend, and then moving on to Tokyo to talk about all of the options that are on the table in Washington when it comes to dealing with the nuclear threat from North Korea. And that, of course, includes, as we know well, a military option. It's the option that is feared in South Korea, which depends on the U.S. for its defense and its protection. Uh, but they also fear retaliation from North Korea. North Korea has already expressed its outrage at the presence of U.S. warships in the water off of the Korean peninsula, saying that the presence of nuclear strategic assets has threatened global security and could push the region to the brink of a thermonuclear war. That's the propaganda from Pyongyang. They've also released images this week of their leader, Kim Jong-un, conducting training exercises, a show of force that accompanies uh, what will be the celebration of the most important day on their calendar. That's a holiday that comes tomorrow. It is around that holiday in the past where we have seen provocative moves like missile launches and other tests that could provoke a strong reaction. Allison, John. Okay, Alexander, thank you for being there and for all of that reporting. We have a lot to discuss. Let's bring in our panel. We have CNN political analysts David Gregory and Abby Phillip, along with CNN military analyst, retired U.S. Army Major General James Spider Marks. Spider, I want to start with you. We just heard something very interesting from um, one of our analysts, Kimberly Dozier, who said that this, the use of this Moab bomb, the, as we've said, the largest non-nuclear bomb ever employed by the U.S., was actually requested during the Obama administration. So why now and why use this bomb? Well, first of all, let's back up just a tiny bit. The Moab was developed and tested back in early 2003, so it was available when I was the senior intel guy when we were going to war in Iraq, it was available for use. There was no good opportunity to use it because the military, Saddam's military kind of frittered away and the insurgency popped up. So there was no good concentration of targets that were not separated from what would have been huge civilian casualties. So it was never used. This was a target that General Nicholson knew could be serviced by this, um, by this munition and it clearly was a tactical decision to do that, saving the lives of uh, Afghan fighters and U.S. fighters that would have had to have cleared this target. So the rules of engagement and the collateral damage estimates, the decision processes have been in place and predate this administration, certainly go back to the Obama administration, Bush, et cetera. So, so they've Dave, been in place for a while. David Gregor, the question is, does this large bomb have a larger strategic significance? Does it fit into a bigger Trump White House military global strategy? Is there a bigger Trump White House global military strategy? Well, I think there's a, an emerging strategy of sending a political message with the use of force. I think you saw that in Syria. Uh, look, the contrast couldn't be clearer to the previous admi administration in Syria, for example. Draw a red line, then don't back it up. We've heard from uh, former advisors to President Obama who said that they wish he would have done that, would have done what President Trump has now done. I don't think it's a substitute for a larger military strategy uh, in either of these countries. I think what could happen in, uh, in Korea uh, is still very much unknown. But there's no question that I think President Trump wants to send a message that there is a new president with uh, an interest in sending a different kind of uh, military and uh, political message uh, to adversaries around the world. And I think there's no question that the use of uh, weaponry like this serves that larger uh, point. But again, to the, the general's point, this is a tactical decision. I don't know that there's a larger strategy in place on how to deal with these, these issues. Abby, let's look at the military actions that the military, uh, the U.S. military has taken since President Trump came into office because there's a lot of them. So, uh, as you know, there was the, what was generally lauded and considered a success, the strike on the Syrian uh, air base. 
There was this Moab bombing. As you know, the, in North Korea, the USS Carl Vinson is uh, heading there now. In Iraq, they're adding 200 troops. Now, there are some that have gone terribly wrong. The uh, raid in Yemen, where civilians were killed as well as a Marine. And then there's just been this friendly fire accident uh, in another part of Syria. So, you know, some people say that this is not what President Trump campaigned on. This is not America first. But isn't this sort of in keeping with we're going to keep America safe? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, one thing we should always remember is that the U.S. military is always engaged in a lot of, of, of pockets around the world. We just don't always hear about it. We're not always focused on it. Uh, one of the, the risks for Trump is that as someone who ran against sort of disengaging the U.S. a little bit more from the world, using those resources instead to build up the domestic, uh, you know, roads and bridges and so on and so forth, there's a risk of being perceived as someone who's just uh, a little little too hawkish for, for some of his core supporters. Uh, so far, Trump has really erred on the side of using um, a lot of sort of, of, of missile power. He hasn't really uh, sort of put forward his, his position or his doctrine on what w would it take for him to authorize uh, ground troops in a part of the world. And until we really see where he lands on that, I think it's too early to know how yeah. far he's willing to go and how much he's really changed from his core tenants during the campaign. That's an important distinction. Guys, stand by for a second, because I'm hearing we're just getting in now video of this bomb blast in Afghanistan, the MOAB, the largest non-nuclear device ever deployed by the U.S. military. Let's watch this, then we'll talk about it. Yeah, there is no sound on this, but you can see there, I guess, the... Very large impact of that. I think that's the aftermath right there. We're going to re-rack it and show it one more time. Spider, you in particular, uh, if you can watch this and tell us what we're seeing as we're seeing it here, Spider. Yeah, first of all, notice the terrain. It's very restrictive. So when you have a concussive blast like that, it's going to be contained within an increasingly smaller area. So the force and the blast is just exacerbated based on where it's striking. Also bear in mind, this was a tunnel complex. So again, as that shock wave goes underground and gets into those different tunnels, it's, it's constricted. And you can only imagine anybody who's down there is now turned to dust. It's not a bu bunker buster, right? That's a different type no, of device. No, no. This is fuel ignition. It, it makes a very yeah. big fire, and that fire, in theory, goes underground and clears out the tunnels, correct? It's an air burst above ground. You can determine at which altitude you want that thing to go off. That's based on how you describe the target. You then have a conically shaped kind of a radius of effects on the ground. It is not a bunk, uh, bunker buster. David Gregory, go ahead. What are you... Uh, what do you want to weigh in on what the president's decision and the militaries have been? Well, again, I guess, you know, uh, I'm thinking about larger messaging, larger strategy at work. Um, I just think we're at a place, uh, and Spider Marks and I have talked about this in 2017 for the U.S. military and for this administration, where as you think about military strategy, you know, air power alone has limited effect and limited utility, even something as, uh, uh, you know, awesome as this uh, to view. Uh, there's a lot of intended audiences here. The United States is very much in a fight against uh, ISIS at a point when ISIS has been degraded significantly and maybe much closer to falling. Uh, at least in portions of Iraq, if not in uh, Syria as much. Uh, you've got an audience in Pyongyang and uh, in North Korea uh, and in Syria and indeed in Russia. So uh, there's a lot of politics involved here internationally where the president is trying to stake out ground. But again, I would say as a military strategy, these are still limited tools in terms of how you follow up on this strategically down the line. I want to bring in our Pentagon correspondent, Barbara Starr. Barbara, we are getting our first look at this video, the first actual military deployment, the first time the U.S. military has ever used this device. This was in a remote mountainous area. You know, you see no signs of, of any communities or anything nearby. What do you see here? 
Well, uh, as we continue to play that video, what I can tell you is this fell, it's hard to see on the, on the video there, but I, we know that this fell into a deep mountain valley. This mm. fell, there's mountain ridges surrounding the area and this cave of, this complex of caves and tunnels was deep in a valley surrounded by these steep mountains. So it's one of the ways that they could keep an eye on the target in the days leading up to this and try to ensure that there were no civilians in the area. Uh, that shot you see right there is a better look at this, uh, at this region, which is so mountainous and so remote. So it falls into this deep mountain valley and the mountains surrounding it certainly, um, I think you can uh, say, would have absorbed some of the blast, which also would have kept damage contained from any other civilian uh, areas nearby. There are, at a distance, um, some villages, some, some areas where there are people, but troops on the ground this morning say they see no signs of civilian casualties. So General Nicholson at his press conference was making the point that this was the best weapon for the target in this remote area because what they had seen were these ISIS fighters retreat into this mountain valley, into these caves and tunnels.